Hi, I'm Kevin Hildebrand. I'm Cantor at Concordia Theological Seminary, Fort Wayne. And even though we're just a few weeks past the celebration of Christmas, we know that Lent is right around the corner. And in the church, when we do worship and music planning, we always need to be thinking several weeks in advance. So today, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about some ideas for Lent and Holy Week. You know, when we begin a new season, like the season of Lent, this might be a good time, first of all, to implement a new musical setting of the divine service so that throughout this entire season, you're using that same setting throughout uh, this, the season of Lent. Or perhaps it's a time to uh, implement or, or bring back or, or reintroduce a, a certain liturgical aspect or, or tradition. One idea we'd like to propose is for the season of Lent to use the gradual. Uh, the gradual is a seasonal proper. It's a, a certain text that is said or sung between the Old Testament and the Epistle. Um, for the season of Lent, this uh, gradual comes from Hebrews 12, O come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. Now, how you use this text is up to you, whether it's spoken, if, if the lector reads it, or if it's, it's maybe read responsively between the lector and the congregation. It can be sung to a variety of, of ways. Uh, there it might be a, a choral setting. Uh, for instance, I know of a very, very nice setting by Kenneth Koshy, published by Concordia Publishing House that we've used here at, at the seminary. Or it's also pointed for singing to a simple chant tone. Uh, you can find the, um, the, the gradual text here in the, the book of the Propers of the Day. You can find it on Lutheran Service Builder. Um, and if you're, you're using it to, uh, to one of those chant tones from, from Lutheran Service Book, that, uh, that text is already pointed there for, for ease of congregational singing. We'd like to provide uh, another option as a free download for you to use and consider in your congregation. It's, uh, it's a, a simple setting for a few handbells and either a solo voice or a group of, of singers all in, in unison. It's simply set to a, a historic church tone uh, to be sung uh, along with, with, with those bells. And, and you can uh, access that uh, uh, here from, from our, our CTSFW uh, resource uh, center here on our, our website. Now, a, a second idea that, that we'd like to present that you can consider during uh, Holy Week in particular is thinking about Palm Sunday or, or Passion Sunday. We've been speaking about this recently in our Liturgics II class, and there's a, a many, many centuries of, of history and practice uh, that uh, is, is too broad to summarize here. I'd recommend that, that you refer to uh, the altar book and in the section for Passion Sunday, the notes on the service will give some good background on how to implement this service in detail with the, uh, the reading of the Passion, with the procession of palms, and, uh, and the reading of the triumphal entry and how that works uh, for your, your congregation. But I think a, uh, a practice that's been being recovered in the church in the past 30 or 40 years is the reading of one of the Passion narratives on that Sunday. This year, in the three-year lectionary, for instance, the uh, assigned Passion narrative is from the Gospel of Mark. And reading and listening to the Passion narrative is unique, unlike most of our Gospel readings for a particular Sunday. Here we get a couple in complete chapters of, of the Gospel to listen to. So some planning and preparation for how to help the congregation listen and receive that word for that day uh, is, is important. Now one of the suggestions that the, the altar book gives is, for instance, to divide up the reading of that Passion narrative between several readers, whether it's two readers, three or more readers, the altar book gives some suggestions of how to do that. Here at the seminary, we've also prepared a script for multiple readers, so it's clear who reads what. One person reads the words of, of the narration of the evangelist, one reader reads the words of Christ, and another person reads some of the other um, uh, characters that, that uh, are mentioned within that passion narrative. And that is also available uh, for you and your parish's use uh, as a download to use on, on this uh, upcoming Holy Week. And a further option to do with this Passion narrative is to, uh, for instance, sing particular hymn stanzas at good division points within that Passion narrative. 
Again, the Altar book provides for each one of the passion narratives a division of uh, different parts of that reading. So, for instance, after in the uh, reading from Mark, the part about the institution of the Lord's Supper, uh, you could sing a stanza of a Lord's Supper hymn, perhaps one that really focuses on the death and the, the passion of, of Jesus. Uh, we've compiled some of the practice that we've done here at Kramer Chapel into a list of readings and suggested hymn stanzas that is also available as a download for you to use in, in your parish and uh, to uh, helpfully make this uh, presentation of that gospel narrative even more rich in your congregation. So we uh, commend these to your use and, and wish you blessings on your Lent and Holy Week practice.